It's a cat in the moonlight, a silver moon shining down on this big black cat. I'm making this cat today. I've used a template from one of my template sets, traced it onto fabric, cut it out, and I've stitched it onto a fabric collage, embellished with stitch, added a backing and a hanging cord. This is a really fun project. So join me step by step from start to finish making this black cat in the moonlight. Let's get started. I'm gonna be using this cat template today. This is from a set that I have with two dogs and two cats. This one's more like a puppy, a dog, a cat standing and a cat sitting. This is the one I've chosen to use today. I'm gonna to make a black cat. I have a piece of black broadcloth. It's about a quilting weight, maybe a tiny bit thinner than a quilting weight. So the way I'm gonna do this today is I'm going to put interfacing onto my fabric. I've chosen a light interfacing that's fusible. Because of the stitching, I would suggest using a interfacing that is quite light, not too, too heavy, but I want it to be stiff enough so that when I cut out, especially these smaller areas, when I cut it out, it will be easier for me than if there was an interfacing. It would still be possible to do it without interfacing. It'll just make it a little bit easier if the interfacing's on. And there's one side that feels a little stiffer, tiny bit sticky. That's the side that I'm gonna place face down on the fabric and I'm gonna iron it and then it will be it will be permanently bonded to the fabric. So I'm gonna go do that now. My interfacing is now bonded to my black fabric. So now I'm going to trace my cat template onto the fabric. Instead of doing it on the front, I'm gonna do it on the back. So the first thing I need to decide is which way I want my cat to face. I think I want my cat to face this way, so that means I want it to cut out in this orientation. So that means I'm going to reverse that and that's the way I'm gonna trace my piece. You can use a fabric marker for this. You could use a pencil or you could use a pen. It's not going to be seen. They're just lines for you to cut out. I'm gonna use this friction pen and I'm simply just gonna trace this cat. Here's my cat. I'm just take a look if there's any spots that were missed. I had a little trouble tracing that tail. It was a bit awkward. So I can just put it back and retrace those spots. There's something catching there on the um, interfacing. It's catching my pen. So look there, that's gonna give me some nice lines to cut out. Now I'm gonna cut out my cat. I'm gonna start with my large scissors and do the larger lines. And then I'm gonna come back in with smaller scissors especially to do that tail area. The other thing that you could do with interfacing is get the double stick interfacing where this part would also now be sticky so that it could just be fused in place on the fabric collage. But I know not everybody has access to all these different types of interfacing and this one's very common, widely available, and it's affordable. So I thought I would use this kind today and it's not that different than the other kind. The only difference would be your shape, in this case the kitty, would be permanently fused in place. 
And with this one, it will have to be sewn in place. Let's see what that looks like. I think that looks good. So now that I have my cat, I need to decide what size I want my piece to be. And this cat, including the tail, is four inches tall. So I want my piece to be taller than four inches. And I can either make it square or I can make it a rectangle. But for sure I know I want it to be bigger than four and in terms of width, wider than three. I wanna pick a solid background fabric. And so I've grabbed some bright colors because I think they're gonna pop really well with the black. So I could test colors like this beautiful blue, green looks beautiful. And I also pulled out an orange. And I think that that's really fun. And it reminds me of fall and Halloween. So I thought, why not? I'm gonna use this orange. I've chosen my size. I'm gonna be working on black felt. White or any other color would be fine too. So this piece is just over five inches long and just over four inches wide. I'm going to place this orange fabric on here. It's not quite big enough, but that's okay. And when I see this cat on here, I need to sort of decide where I want her to be. And that's gonna inform my next choices for other fabrics. So I've also pulled out some other scraps with solid colors that I thought I might like. I actually have a scrap basket that I keep tiny little scraps in. And so I've pulled some of the colors from there and there may be some things in here that will work really well in this piece. So I'm gonna keep this scrap basket close by to pull things out of. And I'm going to build a collage in this sort of almost square, but not quite as a rectangular shape. So now I'm gonna start the process of building my collage. Trimming off the edge of this piece of orange fabric that's gonna act as my background, and then bringing in the other pieces that I have beside me. It's really just experimentation, testing things out. I'm bringing my black cat shape in and putting it up against the different fabrics to see what pops. I really like this yellow, so I know I wanna integrate that somehow. And it's just playing and experimenting and finding something that really works. And once I get those pieces settled, I come back in and see if there's anything else that I wanna add at this point. I don't want my entire color story to be about the fabric. It's one of the reasons why I've picked solid fabric today. I think I'm gonna start with this as my very basic fabric collage, and I'm gonna stitch it in place. And as I go along, I'm gonna decide if I want it to be all stitch that accents it, or maybe I will add in some smaller elements of fabric as well. But as a starting point, I feel like this is really good. I like the size, the placement of the cat, and the two different colors behind her. It almost looks like she's grounded or sitting on something. And this orange is a little more washed out and a dull color where these two are very, very bright and solid. So I think it's a nice balance. So I'm going to start by basting everything in place. I'm going to use black sewing thread to stitch down the cat. And then for the other pieces, I'm going to baste them in white. So I'll start with the background, baste that down, then I'll come back and add the cat with the black thread. An optional step 
is to use basting pins. These are applique pins. They're smaller than normal sewing pins. And so they work really well on a small project like this. I'm gonna demonstrate how they could be used here in this piece. To either pin these in place, so you go right to stitching and not do any basting with thread at all, or in this case, to baste them in place so that I can stitch them down with basting stitches, which is my preferred method. When I baste, I take a tiny stitch on the front and then I hop fairly far across the back. And take another tiny stitch. If I use a thread that matches really well with the pieces that I'm basting down, and sometimes I don't even take out my basting threads. Other times I take them out because they distract me. I can see them. And thinking in this case, most likely I'm going to remove these basting stitches. This just holds everything in place. In this case, with so few pieces of collage, it may not even be necessary to baste. Usually my fabric collages have more pieces than this at the beginning. So I find that this step is really necessary. In this case, I could just leave the pins in and start stitching, or I could even hold these pieces on with my one hand while I sewed with the other. But it doesn't take too long to baste, and it's what I'm used to doing. See, I'm already done. So I can take these pins out, and these pieces are in place. I took a couple of stitches on this piece too. So everything's in place now, and I don't need to tie a knot at the back. I can just cut it. That's what it looks like on the back. So now I can move to my cat. Place her where I want her. I think I like her right there. So now I'm gonna switch to black thread and stitch her on. So I'm using my sewing thread. I've threaded up my needle and I'm gonna do my quilter's knot. And that's where I take the end of the thread I point it towards the needle. I grab it with this hand. I wrap a few times and I pull down, pinching and holding those twists till I get to the very end. And then I have a knot. There it is. So now I can start sewing. The nice thing about using the fusible is that it makes it easier to cut out the shape and it makes the fabric less prone to fraying. The downside, in my opinion, is that it makes the fabric thicker and harder to stitch through. I really like stitching through soft fabrics, but in this case I felt like the fusible was necessary in order for this cat to hold its shape. When I'm looking at it, I've just pulled my thread through from the back just about to begin stitching. My concern is as I'm holding it with my hand, as I begin to stitch in this direction, that the cat starts to move a bit in my hand as I adjust. And I want her to be straight and flat. This is where she's sitting down, so I feel like it needs to be straight. So, so I'm going to hop around with my stitches to secure the cat in place before I do more permanent stitching around it. So I'm going to go in here and hop over to the bottom where I wanna make sure the cat is in the right orientation. And I'm gonna take a stitch in the bottom. And another one, a little further on. I'm 
and I'm going to move around this first go round, spacing out my stitches. Then I can come in later and fill in the big gaps. So I can see now that the cat's in a, a nice position. She's nice and straight. So now I'm going to move down this side and try to make sure I'm keeping everything flat and in place so that she's exactly where I want her to be. So now I've worked my way around and the cat is secured in place. Not the tail, but the rest of her is secured in place. If you were using a fusible interfacing, you could have just ironed and she would have been exactly where you wanted her to be. Then you could come in with the stitching. So this one's a little bit more work, but still very doable. So I've gone around the cat again and stitched it on. It's hard to see because it's in black. I've done straight stitches. I'll try and put a close up there so you can see. Just straight stitches all the way around the edges. Now I have an idea. I think I want to add a moon. So I have one of these templates with circles and I was trying to decide what size I wanted and I was thinking about moon. I want it to be fairly big. For an example, this is my needle puller that I've used as a template before and I want the moon to be sort of not fully on the piece off the side. I feel like that's not quite big enough. So I'm thinking maybe about this size. So the next question is what fabric? So I've gone into my little fabric scrap bin and I've pulled out some fabrics. There's this cute yellow with polka dots. That might be nice. I have this fabric with text. I used this as a moon in a previous project when I made a loon moon piece. Works really well as a moon, I think. I grabbed this piece. I just thought it was interesting. The background's a pale blue. That's kind of pretty. I grabbed this color. It's almost like a denim color. And I'm looking at that and thinking, no, I don't want to bring in another color like that. And then I was thinking about just a light color. It's a really bright moon. This is a piece of muslin. It's sort of an off-white color. And that gave me an idea. I have this piece of muslin that's painted with silver paint. It stiffened it a little bit. And I wonder if that would just be a perfect way to add sparkle and shine and a really interesting element to this piece. So I'm going to take my circle template and I'm going to cut out this three quarter inch circle and place it there and see what I think. I'm just gonna do the same thing that I did to cut out the cat. I'm gonna place it down and trace it and then cut it out, real simple. So there it is, now I'm just gonna cut it out. Okay, here's my moon. Just wanted to correct what I said earlier that this was a three quarter inch circle. It's actually one and seven eighths. This is one and three quarter. The smallest one on this is one and a quarter. So a three quarter inch circle would be actually quite a bit smaller. So it's a one and seven inch, so just short of being a two inch circle. And I'm gonna pop it on and see, I like that. That's really fun. A silver moon it is. First thing I'm gonna do is undo my basting stitches here and just move this piece over. So I'm just gonna snip off the basting stitches and reposition this piece. And my moon's gonna be right about here. So now I wanna talk about the colors that I've chosen. I've pulled out this pearl gray color that's fairly close for the moon. I may wanna bring in a metallic thread later. We'll see. For this yellow, I've brought in a really bright lemon yellow and a darker yellow. I brought in a bright orange in case I want to punch up some of the orange in the background. I also brought in these two shades, which are 
more of brownie orange colors that may be nice to integrate. And then another yellow color, which is more of a golden color, almost an orange that goes with this in the bottom. And then as always, I have black and I have white. So that's my color palette. I always have an accru on hand, which I don't think I'm gonna use here. What I do with my threads is I just stack them up on a nice plate because it's pretty, it makes me happy, it's handy, and I have them at hand to use as I stitch. So I'm gonna start by attaching this moon now. I'm using two strands of embroidery floss, and I'm going to start with my quilter's knot. There it is. I'm gonna do something similar to what I did with the cat where I'm going to take stitches fairly far apart and then I'm gonna turn and come back and fill in between those stitches. There's nothing holding this on right now so it's just going to be me holding it with my thumb as I stitch. I'm gonna stay aware of where the edges are. This strip is no longer attached because I removed that basting stitch so I'm really holding on to both these yellow strips and the moon. And I'm going to pay attention to where the edges are so I don't stitch where there isn't any backing. I'm going to come in right near the top, but not at the top. Just a little bit down from the top. So that my knot isn't sticking up. I know I'm going to be stitching back in this direction so I don't have to start right at the edge. I'm going to take some fairly small stitches I think, spacing them out. Because this fabric is painted with acrylic paint, just craft paint, it's thickened it quite a bit so the needle is going to leave holes when I stitch. So I'm aware of that as I stitch along. I'm not too worried about being precisely a certain distance from the edge. Just sort of eyeballing it. Because I plan on putting stitches in between these on the way back. I don't want to take really huge stitches. That last one I took maybe is a little big. but it's all gonna look good in the end. Because of the thickness of this fabric, I'm stab stitching from the front to the back. It's just easier. If I tried to stay on the front and stack some stitches, it would be a little harder. It would probably warp the fabric and well, might not feel great on my hand. So I'm right near the edge here. So I've worked my way all the way to this side. This is the edge of my felt backing. So I'm going to take a stitch and I'm gonna start moving in this direction. So I'm gonna flip my work and I'm gonna stitch all the way back. I'm going right in between the stitches that I made previously. So I've made it back around to the top I'm ready to do the next step in my stitching. But before I do that, I wanna secure this piece back down. Because if you remember, I removed the basting stitches. And I still have some black thread threaded up from when I completed the cat. So I'm just going to secure this down. I'm pulling this through. It's probably hard to see almost all the way. There's no knot in this, and I'm going to secure this down. I could, of course, use a pin here, but I really like basting with thread. Okay, so that's secured down and it's not gonna move. So I'm just going to cut this thread, no knots, and now I'm ready to continue with the next step with this moon. 
So when I flip this over, you can see my stitching, you can see my felt and where my silver moon is sticking out. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to remove this part of the moon on both sides. So now I'm going to continue stitching around in this direction and secure the moon down fully. My thread is here because I've worked my way back. So I will take another stitch here. There's my basting thread, which I will pull out. There we go. So my options here are to continue with this straight stitch that I've been doing, or I could do a blanket stitch. I think for now I'm going to do the same stitch that I've been doing. I'm trying to go through all the layers to the back. Here I am at the end. I've made it all the way around. And there's my last stitch. And I'm just going to knot off at the back. I'm going to remove the basting stitches at the top and begin stitching there in yellow. So I'm beginning to add layers of stitch. There's a few rows of yellow and I'm just going to continue moving that yellow further down the piece, eventually switching to one of the light oranges and doing some slow stitching towards the bottom. Now I want to remove my basting stitches. There's only a couple of them, but I can see them and they're no longer needed. So I'm using the back of my needle, not the sharp end, but the dull end, to pull out the stitches and remove those last little bits of basting. I've gone ahead and added some more intense stitching at the bottom and added some lines to mimic moonbeams shining down on the cat. Now I want to show you a different way to add a backing and a border. I've cut a piece of black fabric that's about half an inch larger on all sides than my stitched piece. I'm going to place it behind so it's going to be the backing for the piece and I'm going to roll the sides in to become a border. The first thing I want to do is attach this backing piece to the stitched piece. I could sew it on, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fuse it. I have this fusible tape that's very thin, comes in a roll. This is it here. And it's a double sided fusible. So I peel it off of the roll and I can stick it onto the back of my piece. Then when it's in place, I can peel off the other side, which is also sticky and stick that onto my backing fabric. So I'm just cutting pieces and placing them around on all four sides. Then I'm gonna go over to my iron and fuse it on. It only has to be pressed with heat for a few seconds, about 15 seconds, and then it's permanently fused. Now that the fabric's fused on, I want to fold in the corners and iron them down. Ironing might be enough, but you could also put a small piece of the same double-sided fusible tape to permanently adhere the corners down, whatever works. I chose to fuse my corners down, so now that they're all ironed in place, they're not going to move, and I can start stitching the border. So I'm going to start up in this corner, work my way around, and stop here. And I'm just going to roll and stitch. I could iron twice and make a really straight edge, and that's an option. But here, because I've got raw edges and I'm not looking to be precise, I kind of like the idea of rolling edges. It's going to make it a little more uneven. Because I have this corner folded in, I don't have to worry about anything but just stitching. 
this corner on. And then when this is done, then I'll do the same thing to the next corner. So I will start here at the top, bury my knot inside. Another option I wanna mention in case it makes it easier is to use clips to hold in place the rolled fabric. This is such a small piece that I only need to use two. And it helps you decide too where you wanna place it. You wanna pull it in tight. You want it to sit right on the edge. In this piece, I don't wanna pull it in too tight. I wanna just kind of have it touch the edge of where my fabric is. This is the edge of my fabric. My options for stitching, I could stitch all the way around and have my stitch come around. I could also stitch by just catching the edge. I'd come out on the edge here and I could just stitch into my piece and then into my edging. I could decide if I want the raw edge to stick out or whether I want the raw edge to tuck in. Here's a closer look at what I'm doing. If you don't want your stitches to show, then you take a very, very small bite into the colored area and then go into the black area. You can see I'm not worried about my stitches showing and so I'm taking a little bit of a bigger stitch so my black lines are going to show. So I'm gonna work my way all the way down to the end of this side. When I get to the next side, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to roll it. The corner kind of makes its own little miter. You can play with it a little bit. It's a really flexible way to work. I really only need one clip here. I'll start with two. And you just make sure that this corner is secured before I start the next corner. And if I wanted to stitch down this part to secure it, I could also do that. So I've worked my way around to the top here. So now what I'm going to do is bring in some twine. This is black. It's like a hemp cord, so it's quite stiff. Feels kind of papery. And I'm going to measure four widths here. And then I'm going to add a tiny bit to that and snip it off. Then I'm going to start at one end and tie some knots. I'm going to put the first one fairly close to the end. And I'm just gonna keep tying knots like this. And I'm gonna space them out a little less than an inch apart. And that's about three quarters of an inch apart. And I'm gonna do that for a length, almost a full width of these knots. Okay, I've made several knots. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch this piece of twine to the top. It's going to end up being encased. And the knots are there just to help secure it in place. If it starts to slip at any point, then the knots will stop it. Okay, so I'm still threaded up here from coming up this side. So I'm going to continue using that thread to secure on this piece. So this first knot, this very last knot, I'm going to let be outside of where I'm stitching into the top. And I'm just going to stitch along. I don't want this to be on the front, I want it to be on the top. Coming in from the back,
This is almost like a couching on of this twine. And that's the last knot. So that's secured on. And so at the end, I want this to come all the way around and it's going to be the hanger. I'm gonna make knots and I'm gonna make this as long as I need it to be to sort of come to here and then I'm gonna cut off my excess. So I'll just tie some knots now. So I've tied some knots in this end. I'm just gonna snip off the part I'm not using and I'm gonna stitch this on. Same way I did for this side, just doing it in the other direction. So now this has been stitched from both sides to the top and it's secure. So now all I need to do is fold down this last side that's going to encase this twine. It's going to come out from the ends here and that will be the hanger. So the next part is Stitching this part down. I'm going to knot off here with what I have and then get a fresh piece of thread and do that. So, what I've done is folded under this top part and I've put some clips in and I've brought my hanger out right from the corners where I've stitched it. I'm going to stitch this part down. Made my way up to the corner here and I'm going to tuck this so it's coming out the top like that and then stitch it in place. So it's just a matter of holding it closed with my finger here and stitching all the way up. I'm going through a few layers so it's a little thicker than normal. So I'm using my thimble to push the needle through. So there it is stitched in place. So I'm just going to knot off and I'm going to go back and secure this in the same way on this side. So that's now secure and it will hang nicely. So now that I've put the border on, I haven't stitched down these corners and I've stitched it quite close together at the top. So that's all secure. And there's not as close stitching, especially on the bottom here. So I want to go around again and do more stitching. Now the options here as well are to add other colors, to add orange, for example. You can see these black stitching lines, so they're going to show, and it might be nice to add in other colors as well. I've also deliberately left this piece out, so it might be fun to do some stitching on there. Stitch it right on to the black border. So there's just a little bit more stitching to do, and then it will be complete. Before I add more stitching, I want to add some shadows to the moon. Of course, I could do this with stitching. In this case, I'm going to use a pencil. This is a 3B pencil, a 2B pencil, or an HB pencil would be fine as well. I'm just going to add some shadowing just to make it look like the moon a little bit more. Thing I like about the pencil here with this silver paint is that it's also metallic and this pencil allows the silver paint to kind of shine through. So it already looks like it's all blended. Just a few shadows. I'm using this dark rusty color and I'm adding it, stitching right into the black 
and I'm going to move up with some more stitches in this color. So I've added stitching along the bottom and extended it here and I've added stitching along the sides. I'm really happy with the way that it's looking. The last thing I want to do is add some stitching on the cat. This is going to show up really well in real life when you see the piece and touch it. It may not show up as well on camera, but it's really going to add something to have this cat have some texture and stitching on it. Here's the stitching. I'll bring it close so you can really see what a difference it makes. Not in color so much as in texture and there's a shine to it. One of the things I wanted to mention is that the interfacing on this cat was white and if you tilt this to the side you can see just a tiny bit the white on the cat. I could use a black fabric pen or even a black marker and go around the edges before I stitch it down so the black didn't show. But I like it here because I think that depending on the angle you look at it, you can see that touch of white and it gives the cat a glow, which the cat should have because it's in the moonlight. So I've left it there. It's a very subtle thing, but I like it. The other thing that's possible here is if I was thinking of a specific cat that wasn't pure black, I could have added some other colors here. What about a cat that has white socks or white on its tail or on its head? I could have added that white stitching here. In this case, I was thinking of a black cat. I happen to have a black cat who's pure black myself, so I like keeping it all black. But it's not necessary and of course this cat is silhouetted in the moonlight so it's going to be dark but other shades i could have brought in some of these colors if i was thinking of a, a specific cat maybe a calico cat or a tabby cat and added that in here and that would have been really nice as well so here's our cat completed there's a couple of little knots on the back of black from the stitching i added for the cat but there isn't all of the stitching showing because it's encased in this black fabric. It acts as a nice border and a fun way to hang a piece like this. Be easy to hang this just from a, a hook or a pin. It feels very seasonal to me, so it could be something that was put away and brought out at a certain time of year. And I did do some intense stitching along the bottom here. Simpler stitching for the main part and some little bit heavier stitching up here. I think that's a nice contrast to have some heavy stitching and some light stitching and this moon just glowing with no stitches in the middle and it's puffed up a tiny bit. So that adds a really nice element. I could have brought some more silver into some other spots and that would be nice too with some metallic thread. I could have used metallic thread for these moonbeams as well, and that would be nice. But this was a really fun project. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, happy stitching.